How to Build Your Bug Out Bag, Part 6. If you haven't seen the first five parts, i got a playlist down on my, my page, uh, all nice and, and in order neatly for you to check out and uh, get up to speed on what we're talking about here. If you've already seen it, stay tuned. We're going to do a quick video specifically about first aid and emergency type items. Uh, just very, very, very important. Some people do overlook or underprepare and we want to make sure that you guys are good to go when you're actually in the field using your pack. So stay tuned. Welcome back to Dave's Den, everyone, where we're still weathering out the cold weather, the horrible virus, and everything else that's just going on these days that uh, kind of keeps me inside most of the time. So as you all probably know by now, or most of you know, this is my camp pack, which also doubles as my bug out bag and my inch bag. You also probably know about how I like to kind of color coordinate things uh, to help me organize my pack better and keep things fairly modular. Part of the reason why you want to keep things modular, other than just simple organization, is you should have a pocket. Something basically designed for when bad goes to worse, you need to get at that pocket. That's what the outer pockets are generally for. The upper pocket in, uh, in the back of my top flap here is also where I keep my rain gear. Keep that in mind. I don't think I mentioned that in a previous video. My My outer pockets are more or less reserved for items that I may want to get to quickly without digging through my pocket. This one here is when bad goes to worst. This is the pocket that I resort to sort of as a emergency measure, a last measure, or oh no things got really hairy. So you should have something like this on your camp pack. Even if you buy like a big rucksack that is basically all one bag, get something that fits on the side of it, get something that you can sew on or, or whatever that is not deep inside the ruck somewhere. Always have this pocket. Because I'm colorblind and I can't really see the difference between things like green and red, but I'm red, green, colorblind, so blue and yellow tend to stick out to me the most. My first aid kits are blue. If there's a bad situation and I need a first aid kit, blue jumps out, I know what to go for. The first aid kit itself is somewhat modular. So, in a bad situation, I know exactly where I'm going for. Now, I have spoken about first aid kits before. I have actually uh, kind of torn apart my, my first aid kit in a video quite some time ago. I, I, I couldn't tell you what the actual name of the video is, but I mean, you know, what I have in my first aid kit may or may not help uh, you because you may not have the level of first aid training that I've had and I probably don't have the level of training that some of you have. So I have a kit that is good for me to deal with everything that I need to deal with. Now that being said, I'm always willing to learn more and you should be too. So always be willing to upgrade your first aid kit as you learn. Something that it's a skill that you should pick up if you're into this kind of thing, if you're going out camping, hiking, hunting, 
especially hunting, fishing. If you, if you spend time in the woods, even remotely like I do, you should be learning your first aid. So maybe I'll do a video about that someday where I get a little bit more in depth. But this is more my trauma section. And yes, there are some feminine hygiene products in there. A lot of people don't like that, but hey, you know what? They soak up blood. That's what they're meant to do. They're compact. They are individually wrapped. And honestly, I don't have that much of a problem with it. If you are in a bad situation and you start opening up your kit, the minute you tear this open, it's no longer sterile. It doesn't matter what it is, it's no longer sterile. So, you know what? Supplies are expensive. Make do the best you can with what you have. Now, I also do have Tylenol. I have super glue, little first aid, uh, or sorry, not first aid, little individual uh, packets of super glue, and they could be used to seal up wounds. I have done this before on myself. Um, this is um, uh, what do you call the 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 moist towelettes. Uh, my sewing needles, a pocket first aid guide, and a triangular bandage. Not so much trauma, trauma not so much ouchy boo boo. Oh yeah, there's a lot of ouchy boo boo in the back here too. Um, plus my medical scissors. Um, you want to have some trauma. You want to have some ouchy boo boo and some painkillers and so on and so forth. And then you want to have something like this where you've got burn relief gel, after bite, um, medical wipes, uh, a little you know pocket guide to help you along with what you're doing, so on and so forth. Like I say, don't want to get too in-depth because I've done that before and the point of the video isn't necessarily for me to show off my first aid skills, it's to show you that you should have something along this lines and you should know how to use it and it should be easily accessible on the outside of your pack you should not have to dig inside your pack to get to it. There are situations where it just should hit the fan and you need it now. Also, <clears throat> oh, I have a A clip. I will clip this to my ridge line or to my chair or something or other while I'm at camp. Now you will notice that the clip is sitting on the outside. That's because I don't want to waste time trying to unclip that from a line. What I want to do is I want to lift that up a little bit and yank it out and pop that as quickly as possible. So it will hang there, but it's easier to get off because I've reversed the clip. That's something you may want to think about while you're putting together your bag. You don't want to have your first aid kit stuffed way in the back of your tent somewhere. You want it somewhere in camp in an integral part of your camp like your chair or your um, your your wash wash station or whatever, it's got to be accessible. Now, also, everybody loves having mirrors and um oh what do you call um uh, sorry mylar blankets the, the reflective. Uh, kind of things and and you know the grabber blankets and whatever everybody loves to have all these signaling devices that don't necessarily rely on technology all that much and can grab somebody's attention a whistle things like and those are great you yeah you should have those those are great but a small pen launcher for flares really isn't that expensive and if you spend a lot of time in the woods doing, you know, the woods things, especially alone, like I do a lot of the time, 
a flare launcher can be invaluable. Okay, if you've got somebody way over on the other side of the lake and you're blowing a whistle at them and it's echoing all over, yeah, it's going to grab their attention, but they might not know where you are or even, you know, like is somebody in trouble? Why are they blowing that whistle like that? A lot of people don't necessarily think. You let off one of these flares, they're probably going to come and investigate. Also, I spent a lot of time in bear country. There's cougars, there are wolves, there's fisher. Have you ever seen a fisher? It's like a weasel the size of a bear cub, and they are ornery, man. They do not play around. There are a lot of dangerous animals in the area uh, that I live in. So, as part of my flare kit, I also have two, they, they call them bear bags. They're basically shotgun shells without the shot of any kind. They're loud. You got an animal giving you a hard time, you let off one of these things, there's a pretty good chance they're going to make for the hills. Two is the bare minimum. I actually want to get more. I got three flares and I got two bear bangs. I want to get more bear bangs. And when I get more flares, I will probably do a video where I uh, do a little review on this and kind of show it off. Um, but right now, I mean, three flares is kind of the bare minimum that I'd like to carry as well. So I don't want to use them up and uh, not have them. And until all this stuff is um, done and over with, uh, with the whole, you know, COVID lockdowns and businesses not being open, um, I want to make sure that I have at least the absolute bare minimum. So... In addition to your mirror and your reflective mylar blanket and your whistle and, you know, whatever else, um, when you can afford it, I would definitely go out and get yourself a flare kit. A small, relatively inexpensive pen flare kit. And don't buy, like, the big... Um, waterproof case, you know, kind of thing that it goes into, this big, bulky, weighty thing um, that, you know, it just, it, it really takes up way more space than it needs to. A good dry bag is perfect, and it all fits into that pocket. So, that's, that's pretty much it, right there. That's, that's my things have really gotten bad kit. If I'm reaching for one of these, something is probably gone beyond wrong. But at least I'm prepared for it. So, once again, I know it's a short video. I think that it's very, very important to focus one video specifically on this topic. A lot of people always have these little ouchy boo-boo kits and, and ineffectual first aid kits for, for bad situations, and I don't really see a lot of people carrying around things like flares and bear bangs, which, I mean, let's face it, you put a bear bang off in, at someone, you know, and they, maybe it's a lower light situation, they're probably going to leave you alone too. So in a urban situation where, uh, you know, things are kind of gone bad, maybe there's still police around, you need to get this guy away from you and maybe attract the attention of the police or somebody who can help you. A bear bang is a pretty good way to go, too. I personally wouldn't point it directly at the person, but I would make it look like I'm kind of intending to. It's going to draw attention. So it's useful uh, both in a, a bad urban situation and a bad survival situation out in the woods or... Uh, wilderness type setting. Thanks a lot for watching. I really, really, really hope you guys take my advice on this one and, uh, and do that for yourselves. And we'll see you in the next video. Stay wild, guys.